Today we're going to be making cute decorative storage boxes for your tags using the gel press plate and decoupage. Alright, this was a super fun project. I really enjoyed it and I was sort of kind of getting used to my gel plate at this point. But basically what I did was I went to Michael's and I got some boxes and then I decided that I was going to kind of zhuzh them up using the gel press. And I like finding unique ways to use it because if I'm just making a whole bunch of papers to use on stuff, then that doesn't really work for me. I have found that I like using the gel press, but I also like to use it in a way that actually winds up making something. So here I've started putting a couple of different shades of red on the gel press. And now I'm going to make a pattern in it using, and this is like a fondant roller. I got it at Michael's. You can get them online on Amazon and it functionally makes a pattern in it, but I like that it's not totally perfect. And then I turn the box over to this side and you want to really push down. Otherwise you get kind of a gap in the box and it seems weird to think that wood could make, um, that connection, but that turned out as a really, really good side. I thought it was super colorful, very pretty. And then the nice thing about the gel plate, the gel plate is once you're done with that, you still have all that acrylic paint on there that you can use again, right? I didn't want to have to go through and make a whole new set of acrylic paint colors. I wanted to do this. I'm doing it on two different boxes. One is a really cute top open one with kind of a rounded top. And the other one is like a little drawer. I just think that it's adorable. So on this one, I'm using my mermaid pattern fondant roller. And this one, I just love that pattern. It just turned out so well. And so for this one, I am just doing the side of the box. And as you can see, you can see the tiny little bit of the handle. And what this means is that when I open the box, when I pull the drawer out of the box, it will have that pattern on the side instead of being just plain open wood. All right, we're gonna zhuzh this up a little bit, get a little bit more acrylic paint in there, maybe get some of that, you know, um, oh shoot, what's it called? Ombre effect where you don't have that one color of red, but you have a number of different colors. And here we're going to do a little bit of a pattern. So instead of just plain Jane fondant roller everywhere, or just the plain ombre color pattern, you can use all kinds of different things. For this, I, I'm just enamored with circles. So I use the tiny cookie cutter to make this kind of pattern of circles. And they're not perfect. That's the whole thing about this is you don't want it to be perfect. And this is the really cute um, one with handles. I found that this is awesome to keep on top of my desktop, this little box, because it has that open top. And that way I can just pop my tags in, pop my tags out, and just when I'm working on something. And then this was something that worked out really well. I thought, how am I gonna do this round top part, but I just put it on the gel plate and rolled it over. So now I'm going to be working on another side of the box, and this is fun. We're using a couple different kinds of yellow and orange paint, and that was the thing I wanted for the boxes, is I didn't want it to be like so plain Jane. I wanted it to be all kinds of different colors so that I could take all different pictures, right, for my blog with the different colored sides of it. I just didn't want it to be so plain and uniform. And here I'm just brayering this on to get a nice coat of that acrylic paint. You can use any kind of acrylic paint. I'm using super cheap acrylic paint from... I think that one may be a little bit, it may, it may be a whole dollar fifty, but generally I, I buy this acrylic paint at Hobby Lobby or Michael's when they're having the 50 cent day or the dollar day. 
Then we're going to do a little roll. And I don't, as you can see, I can, don't clean off that fondant roller. And what happens is occasionally part of the acrylic paint will peel back off, like it'll get stuck on the gel plate and peel back off. And that's one of the neat things about the gel plate is you get a mix of all different kinds of textures and colors and layers as you use the acrylic paint to pull it off the gel plate you get all different kinds of looks rather than just one plain one. You can see on that side, there was a little piece of green left over, probably from something that I did earlier. And that added a nice little bit of texture to that. So that was the inside of the box. Now we're gonna come back in, add just a little bit more of that color so it's not so, so boring, because I like a lot of color in, in this project. And you don't have to worry about if the brayer does those little lines. By the time you do the roller and you do the edges and you do everything, you're not going to see it. So the gel plate is, and I think I had a cat hair there. I have cat hairs everywhere because kitties like to help with crafting. And so here we're going to do another kind of cookie cutter for the other side. And I think these are fun. I When I got cookie cutters at first, I tried using big ones, but I found this really cute set of super small cookie cutters, and those were just perfect for making these patterns. Because when I used the big ones on a little box like this, it literally you couldn't you couldn't see the different you know you couldn't see the different patterns. It was just like one big thing, and the little cookie cutters did that perfectly. Now that's the final side of the pull-out drawer box. And I'm gonna go ahead and brayer this over again. You can use any kind of brayer with this. And I don't really clean off my brayer much either. Um, I just, I, I'm not super interested in spending all my time cleaning my tools. I'm sort of a messy artist, as you can see from the, the back of that Tim plate, uh, Tim Holtz tonic studio plate. The thing I like about that is it's glass and you can clean the acrylic off the glass super easily. You can do a kind of a, get the big lumps out by using a just a plastic scraper. I have one that I got at Bed Bath & Beyond that I use um, that's like a, it's a scraper for your, for your non-stick pans or you can buy the official ones. And then after that, you use just a tiny bit of hand sanitizer and it will reactivate that acrylic paint and you can just take that right off. All right, we're doing this other skinny side of the tag holder. That came out super pretty. And then I wanted to not just have a plain top on it. So I went over and I did the rolly rolly on that side too. And this is the neat thing about it. You're not trying for perfect. You're just trying to have something cute and I think that box at Michael's, I, <laughs> I probably didn't even use a 40% off coupon because it was so cheap. I think it was either $1.49 or $1.99. So this with all the acrylic paints I have in my drawer, I think that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the gel press plate is because I have so many acrylic paints. I've bought all these beautiful colors. And for me to take the time to sit down and get a paintbrush out and maybe a stencil or something like that and to, you know, put the first coat of paint on and the second coat of paint on. And I'm not the kind of artist that can draw beautiful things, but I can use these kinds of tools, the gel press and then the, the pattern with the, you know, the fondant rollers and really get some cute looks without having to be, you know, I'm doing the air quotes right now, the official artist. And here I'm going to just hit that last side of this box. Here it comes. And you can see on the front of the green, I didn't record that part because I got part way done and then really started to think that you guys might like to see this because it turned out super cute. But I didn't reach over and press down. And as you can see, you don't always get a super clean 
you know, match with that, but you can use that, that acrylic paint on that gel press over and over and over again. And the nice thing is, is you get layers and layers and layers of that. And then I thought this was fun and that I was super smart, to be honest with you. I went back and I did the top of this drawer to really get the, the colors in there so that whenever you pulled the drawer out, it would look really, really cute and there wouldn't be like this weird wooden edge on it. So I thought that turned out great. And you didn't have, to, I didn't have to have it perfect. I just went along and picked up that acrylic paint off of there and it, it stays, they call it open, but it stays wet for a really long time. All right, last but not least, I have this really weird side of the box that I can't just squish down onto the gel press plate, right? But I've been doing a super fun thing. I use these, uh, I've been making gel press lifts or prints from the different um, leftovers I have and things like that onto tissue paper. And the reason why I like the tissue paper is because I use white and so it almost disappears when you put it on. And what I did was I tore a little part, a little rip in there, and now I'm just putting, this is Mod, Mod Podge, um, which is decoupage paste. You could use a gel medium or something like that. And then this worked out perfect. So I figured if I had the rip at the top, I would notice it all the time, but I ripped kind of a, a cross in there. And since it's underneath, and I've used this a bunch since then, since it's underneath, I don't mind it at all. I don't even notice that there was a little um, crossover there underneath where I had the two parts of the tissue paper coming together because it's actually, you know, it's underneath that, that little button of the, the drawer pull. And then you want to squish this down really good. You want to paint all the way out to the edges and then squish this down really good and then you're just going to let it dry and then if you're the kind of gal that likes a really crisp edge you could go ahead and cut that off there but I didn't even bother to do that I just ripped off the edges and then I went back with a tiny little bit of um, Mod Podge on the edges and did those and you'll see them in the picture at the end here it turned out really well and then I have another piece of tissue paper. I wanted a little bit of contrast here. So I just picked, I just cut out a little tiny circle to put on that, that drawer pull button. And of course, you gotta get everything all straightened out there before you do that. And the nice thing about Mod Podge is you can go back in and just flatten that down. So I went around the whole button. I went around um, the edges because I didn't want a weird edge. And I also don't want to have to paint. I'm really, you know, I, I really like using the tissue paper because it turns out so pretty um, with all the different colors from the gel press. So I did the edges. Now I'm going to do the top of the button or the drawer pull. And then you just stick it on and that will adhere to the Mod Podge. And anywhere there's white, you'll get a little hint of the white on this because the wood that, that this stuff is made of is really light. It, um, it turns out to be white. It'll also go into a color if you had a color underneath. It can tend to disappear. And if you were to go over it with another layer of Mod Podge, that tissue paper would just keep disappear the white tissue part of the tissue paper would just keep t disappearing more and more and I went around and I squished this in and now it's only going to stick and be part of it where it touches the Mod Podge so when I did this I was like oh my gosh am I gonna have to take a craft knife and go around and cut this all out and and I did that a little bit but because the the tissue paper gets wet right on the Mod Podge it's really easy to take off. So I just wanted to take off that big hunk and then stick it tightly underneath the 
drawer pull so that I wouldn't have to go in and be so fussy later. And you can tell I'm using intricate tools for this. I just grabbed a pair of scissors and started sticking it in there. And it's a little fiddly, right? This wasn't, I knew it was going to be harder because it wasn't flat, but it turned out super cute in the end. And I love how this came out. All right, and then I also had the inside of the the handles of this. I mean, I don't use it as handles, obviously, but that decorative bit that looks like a little bit of a handle. So I did exactly the same thing. I went and I cut a couple pieces of this tissue paper. And I picked coordinating colors. I don't think I had a really pretty red like that and it matches the the little rollover top of it and then you just want to figure out how you want to get it in and I just wanted it so that if I had shorter tags it didn't look so plain wood kind of thing and then you just go in with your Mod Podge and just glop it on make sure it doesn't really go around the edges but it, you can put as much as you want on the top just a, a nice coat and scooch it over squish it down and that is literally how I got the tops of the insides of these done and I just I I love how this project turned out I didn't go back and do anything with that funky green edge I just have it on the on my desk with the blue edge on but I could go back and do another jelly plate if I wanted to on the back side of that but Honestly, I think this turned out beautiful. It was a super easy project. I think start to finish, not counting the extra pieces of um, tissue paper that I'd done before, I don't even think this was a half an hour, including letting the, the paint dry and pulling it off, and or excuse me, letting the Mod Podge dry and pulling the paint off. This was just a super quick, super easy project to do. And... Uh, I would totally do it again. So there you have it, the finished boxes. They turned out great. I just love having like little decorative places to store my tags. I don't make tons of them. I mean, if I think if you were the kind of gal that, you know, makes a ton of tags to use in your artwork later, then you would want a bigger solution than this, obviously. But for me, just to have a little something on my desktop that kind of corrals them and holds them when they're all done worked out perfectly, and it was super cheap and super easy. Hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.